gonna make the profiles boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. What it is, you already know what it is right here on Gunner's Profiles. We're gonna get into it. As you can tell by that thumbnail, shout out to my Asian partners, man. Real talk, guerra, war. That's what these guys are into, man, or at least that's what they were into at one point in time in my city. I can't talk about anyone else. I don't understand, and I don't know if they were getting down or getting off like they were in my city, but guaranteed in Merced, man, them Mong cats, them Mian cats, them Vietnamese, Laotians, or whatever you wanted to call them at that point in time, what's about their business? Say that with your chest, right? Guard, come get these Asian cats. They're different. Now, trip out. Um, I remember... You know, I remember not, be, not having an, any animosity between the Norteños and the Asians um, in my city. Okay, there never was, cuz. Um, there was one group at one point in time, and we're going to get into that, that we did have a little, we got a little funky with, right? But for the most part, man, uh, we had a lot of love for the Asians. They had a lot of respect for us. Did they have any love for us? I don't fucking know, right? But they had a lot of respect. Um, and we definitely kept it like that. Reason being, um, they weren't the ones to be played with. Now, I remember back in the days, the original groups, the original gangs that were formulated in Merced that were Asians, if I recall, was a gang called the Black Tigers. There was the White Tigers and the Black Tigers. Now, these were the original groups in Merced. They used to hang out at a little pool hall on Yosemite Parkway called Ferronis. That's where they would kick it. You can always find the Asians at these pool halls. These were their establishments. This is where they, they had this shit on lock. You'd walk in there and they'd be like, dung, 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 dung. they'd be on your ass. You'd be like, oh shit, right? They're about to get off where they're mad at. Um, but for the most part, like I said, if you were Mexicano, if you were Norteño, Paisa, whatever the case, they never they never tripped really, um, unless you went and stepped on their toes or said something bad to them and then it was going to be ugly. Um, but the Black Tigers and the White Tigers gangs were the originals founded in Merced. They were going at it. I remember there was this one guy named China Boom. That's what they called him. I don't even know if that was his real name. But China Boom used to be going at it uh, pretty viciously. He was a well-known character. And nobody liked him. I mean, nobody. It seemed like every Asian that blew into town or every Asian after that um, always had his name in their mouth. That, that was the one guy that everybody wanted. You know, and I think it was because he put in so much fucking work, man. He was the one establishing the gangs Zimmer said uh, concerning the Asians. You know, we didn't hear nothing about no Asian gangs. And so this cat started putting it down, and he was part and a member of the Black Tigers. Now, eventually, the Hmong, uh, the Hmong people started to get deep in the city of Merced. A lot of uh, 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 Hmongs moved into Merced and started to establish on streets. And we didn't take no notice. We weren't tripping as Mexicanos. It was like none of our business, what their community was doing. Like I said, they were a very respectful people. They always kept it cool. But I started to notice in school there would be a lot of Hmongs. Um, and that's what just what it was. Well, a gang started to spring up in Merced. Now, uh, there's been debate on where this gang started. Some say Fresno, some say Stockton, some say Merced, uh, some say Visalia, but it was a gang called MOD, the Menace of Destruction or Masters of Destruction. Um, I remember when they came up, everybody was like, oh, snap, right? I don't want no problems, right? Nobody wanted any problems because this particular group right here, they were different. I even remember my tia who worked in the school district at that time coming home and saying, mijo, these dudes, these MOD cats, they do not, they do not play. Okay. They were getting caught at school with all kinds of straps, allegedly machetes. And todo my. These vatos were definitely on a mission about their mail to the hillside of Vallejo. They weren't, they were not playing. And they were the very first group, the dominant Asian gang to come into Merced being most of a Hmong and put it down. Now I never know or I never knew if they were Bloods or they were Crips. They really didn't display colors at that time. It was kind of just like whatever. And I remember that the one spot nobody wanted to go to in Merced, but it used to be popping, was Hmong New Year. They used to have Hmong New Year at the fairgrounds, and oh my God, right? So I there would be Vatos um, headless when they left that motherfucker. People didn't go in and come out the same way. You went in to get a little noodle, you came out with your whole noodles gone, right? They, these Vatos were definitely not playing. This was their home ground, home, their home turf. Hey, Saskia, and they were fucked batters up. <laughs> they didn't play. Now, another group that sprung up, the Asians, that started to uh, uh, go at it real quite extensively with this group was the Oriental Troops. Now, when the Oriental Troops came into town, I remember I'm um, tripping out because I was at continuation school. I was a youngster, too, and I'm looking. I'm like, damn, who the fuck are these vatos, right? 
They all had BMWs. Asians back then, they always had the sickest Acuras, BMWs, Mercedes Benzes. Vatos couldn't just drive a Honda Accord. They didn't know what a Camry was, right? Nah, they had to be either in a Supra, an Acura, a motherfucking BMW. Yes, indeed. I wrote graffiti. Um, but I remember there was these three BMWs in Merced, man. It was a white one, a baby blue one, and a black one. And these Vatos used to be riding around mugging. They'd have their hats like that, their little tails pop popping. And these Asians look different from the MOD. Whereas the MOD were on the block all day, spiky hair, long hair. I remember they used to have Metallica t-shirts on. They were just a little bit different. They were more like stoners, yet fucking they'll cut your head off. Just craziness. Um, these Vatos were more like gang related. I don't know if these Vatos came from like Long Beach or they came from Fresno. But these Vatos definitely came and they used to all wear these old school hats. I don't know if you guys remember the old school hats. All black you used to go to the mall and get fucking your, your Vatos put on them. But they all had OT or troops on their hat. And I used to be like, damn, troops, what the, the, they thought there was a rat group or what? Nah, these were the Oriental troops and they were here to stay in the city of Merced. Well, they started to kick back with another group. And now this is the one group that we went out of with just for, let me see, the wind's blowing, just for a second or two. And they were called True Blue. Now, True Blue was the first Asians that came to Merced that I started to realize were Crips. They actually were Cripas. They were claiming that Cripping wasn't easy, but the Asians had to do it. They were putting it down for their crip. And at about the same time, another group sprang up called HBO, Homeboys Only, that were an offshoot of MOD. Actually, it was kind of like a subset. They kicked it, and then eventually they gravitated into MOD. It was like their, their minor leagues, right? Um, but I remember MOD and the True Blue used to go at it. Every time they seen each other, it'd be on and cracking. To what degree of cracking? Uh, heads were cracking, right? Balthus were getting off in that fashion. And there was a lot of war in the early 90s. Now, this is pre-me going to YA. I went to Hawaii just about this time, like maybe a month or two after, that I started to notice all this plato and merced between the Asians. See, prior to this in the 80s, you never seen too much funk. There wasn't a big Asian influence. But once they started to come in and bring their different hoods and their gangs and establish, it was on. Now, this gang True Blue, um, like I said, they used to function with the OTs. Now, there would be some TRGs that would come into town, um, but there wasn't a, an establishment of TRGs, meaning they didn't have a big group there. They weren't organized. But you'd see them every once in a while, TRGs, like, it was had, and we always got along with the TRGs. They were always cool, and I guess because the ones that came were either from Fresno or Long Beach, and they had funk with the Bulldogs, and they had funk with um, the Sureños down south. So when they would come, it was like, hey, you know I mean? The enemy of an enemy is my friend, and we were good with that. Fuck that. Don't fuck with Asians. They got heavy machinery. Let's just say that, or at least they did, allegedly, right? Um, so we were cool. Uh, but the TRGs did fuck with the Oriental Troops and the True Blues, and we didn't like the True Blues. And there was a reason why we didn't like them. Not because they were crisp, but because they chose, because of the color blue, to gravitate and to start hanging out with the Southsiders from A-Town, which were our enemies. Um, and we would see them, they would roll together, they'd kick it together, and man, if they caught homeboys slipping, they would participate in the beatdowns and everything. Um, and it made us feel some type of way. We weren't feeling that way against all Asians because we already knew, man, the MODs were cool. They were doing their own thing. They had their own funk. And nobody wanted that smoke. Let's just, hey, simply put, nobody wanted that action. See, in other cities, it's different. Like I know in Visalia, man, you have uh, the Asians that go at it, of course, with the North Daniels. We never had that smoke. We never had that funk. Two reasons. Like I said, it was a respectful thing. Um, we just never beefed. And another thing is, we used to talk amongst our own, like, hey, these Asians are getting deep. But you know how it is. There's always one homeboy. Hey, these vatos are getting deep, babe. Maybe we need to check them. Shit. Shit, you check them. That about the shit. We put with the little 38. That's all we have in the barrio. You see what that about the guts? Shit, that about the carries a Uzi in the fifth grade. I'm cool with that, right? I'm good with that. Um, the Asians always were the ones. They'll fuck around throw a grenade at you. You know what I mean? It'll be game over. Um, and we always knew that. It wasn't about being scary. It was about uh, playing chess, not checkers. It was about saying, okay, there's no reason to go. Hey, don't start no funk. Won't be no funk, right? There was no reason to go start some shit. We could just say with our chess and stay home, right? Um, but there was definitely a lot of war going on with the Asians. See, the Asian gangs are overlooked. And it's always made me wonder why. You know, I know in Long Beach, the Longos definitely were going at it with the TRGs. That was something I actually became a part of because being incarcerated down south in YA as a youngster, I seen it firsthand, man. I seen Asians, and I've said it before, come into the compa and get immediately uh, removed off the compa or get immediately ran upon by the longos. The longeros were not playing. And I'm talking about the north side, east side, and west side. Um, they were definitely about the business, and the TRGs were about their business too, man. It, the funk was on. 
I know at one point in time, man, there was green lights and things of that nature that were going on down south. I, I have no recollection of that exact word or, or knowing what was going on, but I do know now as an older adult that that's what was going on, and I could only see why they were getting rushed constantly. I mean, they were not allowed to establish on any compa or in any yard, period. I mean, it was ugly and it was unfortunate because there wasn't a lot of them, bro. You'd have maybe two TRGs in the whole institution, and, uh, you know, the bottles would try to knock the G off that TR. It was ugly. Um, but there's a lot of different cities, even up north, where you had the agents going at it with certain gangs. I know for a long time, the Bulldogs also were going at it with the, uh, the tiny rascal gangsters, the TRGs. Um, I know somewhere along the line, another gang sprang up, and they could have been there around that time, but I never took notice of them, and that was the Asian boys. Now, the Asian boys, the ABZ, started to become deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, they're one of the most deepest gangs now. I think MOD might be the deepest, maybe TRG um, and the ABZs, the Asian boys, but they definitely made their presence felt wherever they went. I remember when they first came into Merced, you know, they were like, hey, we're taking over all this shit. And we was like, oh, well, 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 hold up. Not, all, not our block, right? And they were like, no, not your block, but every Asian block, we, we need that. And there was a lot of war, man. See, a lot. Of, one thing about the Asians was you didn't know. With Norteños and Sureños, it was all out there, front page newspaper. Uh, with the Asians, it'd be in the back. You know what I mean? Back little article. Hey, guess what? Another two dudes got shot today. We said, oh, the damn Asians. They're getting it, right? They started to get it where they started to gravitate. Next thing you know, they're right under the sports section. Next thing you know, they're over there by the weather girl. Next thing you know, they're on the front page of the paper throwing it up. You know what I mean? These motherfuckers, they started to become the gangs that were actually rocking the most. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you and talk about other North things were putting it down. We didn't have to. The enemy guys knew better than to come into the town. When they did come into the town or we decided to go in their town, it was what it was. Cause, But for the most part, the gangs in Merced weren't rocking like that. We didn't have to, man. We were just doing our thing. Motherfuckers were just getting hard. Right? Everyone was kicking back. Uh, but the Asians stood rocking. And that was the thing was we didn't know exactly who was the enemy of who. Because, see, I had a relationship with a lot of the MODs. I was cool with them. Shout out to my boy Booger, my boy Pac-Man, right? Um, I was always cool with the Asians because I had an Asian partner that was a Norteño. And a lot of these bosses were his primos. You know, they're all related, it seems like. Just like Mexicans. We're all related, right? Um, so I used to go to their pads. And we used to rock with them. Meaning, you know what I mean? If something went down, if, and then that's what I respected about them. If I was chilling in front of the house with four or five MODs and a couple homeboys, man, the south side of the screws, by, we're all getting off. Okay, we're drinking, we're drinking that white rice wine. We're all, we're all getting off. No questions asked. These bottles pulled out all kinds of heavier machinery and, and we got spitting, right? That's just how it was. That's the type of people they are. They rock with who they're with. Okay, now at the same time, Whatever their business was, it would be the same thing. If, if one of their enemies came, I couldn't tell the difference. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what the fuck the vato was. I thought that was your camera. No, that's that vato from OT. Well, shit. I, you know I mean? To what degree of BMW? I don't know. You, fucker, you fuckers all have them. They'd get off. We'd, we'd assist. Um, but we tried to stay out there mixed for the most part because we couldn't tell the difference. We didn't know who was who and what was what. Um, until, like I said, later on in the years when vato started to hit it up. You'd see it everywhere. Oriental Troops. Uh, true Blues, and like I said, man, we didn't like the True Blues. Let me tell you a story one time what happened with the True Blues. They actually had a Valto, he was, a, he was an Africano. He was a black dude from True Blues, which always tripped me out because he was a Crip and he used to Crip hard. I mean, this Valto was into it. Blue every day, big old Crip on his hat, um, but he always let everybody know that he rocked with the Asians, that he was a True Blue. And I always tripped out on that because I was like, this is the one brother that rocks with the Asians. He was damn near Asian. He could speak their language. He was rocking with them to the fullest, man. He was accepted. Everybody knew exactly who this fucker was. And he had this close, close bond with the eight towns perennials. Um, I ain't gonna lie, man. He gave us the blues. You know, this dude was always in the mix. This dude gave us the blues, man. This was the one that every time you seen him, you'd be like, there's that motherfucker right there. We was on his head, people. We was trying to get that nigga, boy, man. We wanted that motherfucker bad, eh? right? But we couldn't get that brother, man. That brother was mobbing. The mobilization was real. And that's just what it was. Um, now, you got to understand that at the end of the day, this guy um, was standing 10 toes down for what he truly believed in. And when you get, when you're part of a gang, doesn't matter what color you are. Like I've always said, man, you become that, doesn't matter if you're black or white or green or yellow or brown. You become that. 
You know, I had a black homeboy. He wasn't a black homeboy. He was a Norteño. I had an Asian homeboy. He wasn't an Asian Norteño. He was a Norteño. It doesn't matter how you look, your ethnicity, if you fucking eat padak and sticky rice. None of that matters. Look at, there's an Asian right now like, what you know about padak and sticky rice? Shit. My cow. I know all of that. I ain't no more day or no more pee. I know what it is, right? See, I can speak a little more. I was taught three words. Mo pee, mo cow, mo day. And it says, yeah, they're cuss words, but fuck it. I can speak it, right? And that's just what it is. Anyways. Um, you need to understand that this individual definitely was giving us the blues. I remember one time I was at the Shadowbrook Apartments and I ran into this dude, right? And uh, I seen him. He was at a car point. There was like four or five Asian dudes with him. And I told the homeboy, we're walking. We walked past. He didn't notice us. So I was like, there's that motherfucker, right? I forget his name for the death of me, right? But I was like, there's that motherfucker right there, bro. Let's get off where we're mad at. But hey, you got to watch out because he's with his homeboys and they're going to let us have it, right? That's them true blues right there. And I remember there was this one uh, white dude that used to be killed. There was two of them. They were brothers, Jonathan, and I don't know his other brother. But they were posted up right there, too. And I was like, oh, we can get all these motherfuckers right now, right? These were the ones that was actually out there hunting us, was the ones giving us that shit, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, Asian guys. Here we go, right? But really, we were after the black and the two white guys. We weren't really tripping off the Asian guys because they wasn't doing too much. Like I said, um, we'd see them in traffic, and they'd be like, what's up? And we'd hit them with the what's up. And that's about all that was, right? This motherfucker right here, this brother right here took the initiative to go out there and do something. Okay, we're going to get ours right now. Or to what degree of getting ours? I thought we were, right? Let me tell you something, bro. We pulled up like some Bob Wolsels, right? Just us two with the bat. Was happening? <clears throat> you know what I mean? I ain't never told you this, but I got a bullet in my ass. Let's just say that. Okay, it grazed me, though. <sniffs> the other way, right? And I said, God damn, so now my ass looks like a cross, right? I got the crack with the... Yeah, they done did me. They creased my shit, right? He creased my Ben Davises. And that was it. I said, God damn, right? He was like, what's happening, cuz? I was like, no, no, no. To what? Say that with your chest, right? Oh, bah, And I was gone. Um, Vault was no joke, man. I have to give respect to the Asians of the 90s. You know, that's when war was vicious and violent. I don't know if it's still going down. You know, I don't keep up with what they got going on. But I do definitely 100% know that back then... It was fucking definitely popping, man. A uh, shout out to the MODs, the TRGs, Oriental Troops, Asian Boys, V Boys, uh, Olokes. Uh, all the real ones that came out of Merced, man, that definitely put it down. Like I said, I, I was cool with all of them. Uh, just the True Blue was the ones I didn't like, right? Um, but again, you know, that's that's what it is. You know, if you don't like somebody, you don't like somebody. They don't like you either. Right? Um, but everyone else was cool. Uh, treated us with a lot of respect, man. There was never no funk. But... The inner turmoil between them, the wars, how many dead bodies, how many, uh, um, you know, uh, families got left grieving, man. It was astronomical. I think in the 90s, you know, everyone likes to talk about the Crips and the Bloods, the North and the South going at it, man. But everyone sleeps on what the Asians were doing. Their wars were just as heavy, man, if not even more, because they was, they was using heavy machinery, eh? Like I said, man, they was out there welding the motherfuckers' heads shut. They, they, they were different, you know, and anyone would tell you that. You know what I mean? Even Mazi said, shout out to the Asian boys. I'm forever in you. You know what I mean? He's forever in their debt because, man, when you needed something, they had it. <laughs> Dripping like water. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. At any point in time that you try to belittle the Asians, man, and their contribution to the gang community, do not because they're different. They definitely will handle their business, man. And I got a lot of respect for them, man. I don't just look at someone and think that they're, they're prey or that they're weak, man, because they don't look like me. I already know, man, every different group wiggles. You know, uh, who's going to win at the end of the day? There is no winners. There is no losers, bro. You know what there is? There just is what it is, man. When it comes to the gang life, man, everybody lost. We done lost already. You know, we done lost our way. Our ways are to show compassion, to show love, man, to show respect to the gente. And uh, and that's how you get that big old bag. And then you get a mean ass, mean -ass mom on from an Asian chick. Mm -hmm, I didn't win that route too. She was bad, eh? Her brothers were M.O.D. They weren't playing either. They were about to master destruct my ass. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move with a purpose. Get it, homie, for your family. I'm going to get it for mine. Hit me with that like and subscribe and that thumbs up if you fuck with me. If not, you can hit me with that thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears guns crown. And I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I truly believe in, and that's the coming together of all people. Shout out to all my Asian partners, the real ones, really doing real things, man. You know, shout out to all the Hente men uh, um, that ever rocked with the Asian man and knows exactly what they're about because uh, they're about that business. This is the gun. Bang, bang.